Good morning and welcome to St. Paul's Church in Concord, New Hampshire. So glad you're joining us for this Sunday morning service. Today is the last Sunday of the Epiphany and we'll be celebrating a meal for a dispersed community. That means that if you do not have your bread and your beverage at hand, you can pause the service right now and go get something so that we may share together this meal. Our opening hymn today is When Morning Gilds the Skies. When morning gilds the skies, my heart awakening cries. May Jesus Christ. Let all the earth around 
let us confess our sins to God. We confess our sin and the sins of our society in the misuse of God's creation. Gracious God, we are sorry for the times when we have used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest, but sometimes forget that you have given them to us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry. We are thoughtless and do not care for the wor enough for the world you have made. We store up goods for ourselves alone, as if there were no God and no heaven. Gracious God, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins and heal and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the high. of your only begotten Son, revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgah. Elisha said to Elisha, say here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elisha said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to do to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company from prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elisha said, took his mantle and rolled it up 
and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elisha said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elisha ascended into a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is a portion of Psalm 50 found in our leaflet. Please join me. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him, there is a consuming flame and round about him, a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause, for God himself is judge. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is God who said, let light shine out of the darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, and he led them up to a, to a high mountain apart by themselves. 
and he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared with him Moses and Elijah, and they were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them not to tell anyone about what they had seen until the Son of Man had been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. As we come to the end of the season of Epiphany, the season of light, we recall one of the most remarkable, one of the most inspiring events in Jesus' ministry on earth. We call this occasion the Transfiguration, because right before the eyes of Peter, James and John, Jesus went through an amazing transformation. Mark tells us that he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white. When Jesus was transformed from ordinary to magnificent in the space of a few moments, you might expect his disciples to have been dumbfounded by the whole experience, but they weren't, not at first, anyhow. And I don't believe it was because they were so tired. I think they simply couldn't take it in. James, John, and Peter didn't understand how or why their teacher was suddenly radiating the brightest light, so they didn't remark on it. A few moments later, they couldn't understand where Moses and Elijah had come from. So Peter fell back on practicalities and offered to put up shelters for them and Jesus. But then, when the cloud enveloped them and God's voice spoke out of it, the disciples were speechless with terror. What about us? Do we know what to say? Or have we missed the point of Jesus' blinding radiance? Do we get so bogged down in practicalities that we, overlook, that we overlook something wondrous? And do we fail to hear God's voice because we're afraid to listen? I believe there are three important things Jesus wanted his friends to understand on the day of his transfiguration. And I believe he wants us to understand them too. First, there was a dramatic change in Jesus' appearance. In the previous verses of Mark's gospel, when Jesus had finished telling his disciples about his approaching death, he promised them that he would rise again and would return in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Jesus' transfiguration was a foretaste of that glory. It was a hint of what was to come for the benefit of his closest followers to help them understand that everything Jesus had predicted would come to pass. Not just his suffering, not just his death, but his rising to life as well, his inheritance of his father's kingdom and his glorious return. In the books of Daniel and Revelation, we read that both Daniel and John had visions of almighty God with head hair and clothing of brightest white and eyes, and eyes like fire. When Jesus looked like this that day on the mountain, just for a few moments, he was demonstrating that he and God are one and the same. The message to John, James and Peter and to us is, don't limit your perception of Jesus on the basis of how he looks on a daily basis, going about his work in Galilee. 
Jesus is more than wise and kind and good. He's not simply a skilled teacher or even a gifted prophet. He's the son of God, creator of the universe and savior of the world. The second important lesson of the transfiguration was the appearance with Jesus of Moses and Elijah. For a short time, they stood speaking to Jesus. Then they disappeared and he remained. If the disciples had been in a fit state to take it on board, this would have been another powerful affirmation of Jesus' identity. The Old Testament contains the complete record of Jewish law, of which Moses is traditionally believed to be the author. It also contains the words of many prophets who pointed to the coming of the Messiah, and Elijah is considered to be the greatest of these. So Moses and Elijah represent the old covenant law and the prophets, and Jesus is the fulfillment of both. He isn't their conqueror or their enemy. After all, Jesus, Moses, and Elijah spoke together as friends. But Jesus represents the new covenant. He brings the promise of real salvation, permanent forgiveness, and abiding love. In return, he asks Peter, James, and John, and us as well, not to stand still. It's always tempting to hang on to what is familiar, to build shelters for Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, which might stop them moving on to the next phase of their journey. But God and God's messengers can't be tied down. We need to take part in fulfilling God's, promise, God's purpose, not get in the way of that fulfillment. The third thing we can learn from the transfiguration is to pay attention to God's voice. As the cloud covered the mountaintop and enveloped Peter, James, John, and the others, God spoke to them using almost the same words spoken at Jesus' baptism in the Jordan. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. If the transformation of Jesus' appearance wasn't enough to convince the disciples of his true identity, this declaration surely must have been. But were the disciples persuaded? There's plenty of evidence in their later behavior that suggests they weren't. Or at least that even if they had been convinced, doubts were beginning to creep in. And as for God's instruction to listen to Jesus, the disciples often failed in that department, at least while Jesus was still with them on earth. Perhaps it was just too intense an experience for them. Maybe their terror did get in their way of their hearing, or maybe they were simply too afraid to listen because of what God's words might mean for their future life. And perhaps that's what can stop us listening to God. Maybe we don't want to know that Jesus really is who God says he is, because that would, that would upset too many of the safe and familiar structures we've created in our life. Maybe we don't want to listen to Jesus because we're afraid of what he might tell us. But if that's the case, then we're missing the whole point of why Jesus came to live among us, why he died and was resurrected, and why he's coming again to gather up those who look forward to his return. And the point is this, Jesus is a gift given by God out of overwhelming love for us. He came to teach us to love God in return and to love one another in the same way. No one who desires the very best for his people is going to tell us to do anything that will cause us harm. We must listen to Jesus and act on his words for the good of ourselves and the whole world. Finally, Peter, James, and John came down the mountain again and went back to their everyday life. Jesus told them to say nothing about their experience that day for the time being. Most likely, right then, they weren't capable of putting that experience into words. But once they knew that everything really did happen as Jesus said it would, once they'd met and talked and eaten with the resurrected Lord, everything made sense and they were able to share the amazing story as they shared it with us through the Gospels. 
that sharing of the transfiguration story is especially important to us at this particular point in time as the people of this parish embrace the way of love and focus on moving forward in our individual and corporate spiritual journeys. For anyone on a journey of faith, hearing a personal testimony of an encounter with God is the second most powerful experience they can have. The most powerful, of course, is having such an encounter themselves. Even someone who's been a Christian for years can be hugely affected by hearing how God has touched another person's life. And yet, so much of the time, we keep those encounters to ourselves and no one else ever benefits from hearing about them. The greatest thing we can learn from the Transfiguration is to make sure other people get to hear what it's all about. We need to remember how important it is to see God in Jesus, to be open to the wonder of his presence with us, ready to listen to his voice and willing to share all of these things with our children, our families, our friends, with anyone who may be still standing at the foot of the mountain and longing to know what it's like at the top. Amen. Please join me now as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers of the people, Form 3, can be found in your order of service. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. As we pray through our parish list, we lift the following people to you. Mark, Elizabeth, and John Evans. Matthew, Jennifer, Lewis, and Anna Evans. Bill and Mary Lou Evans, Leslie Farmer, Mary Farrell and Paul Cotillia, Michael Feinstein, Diane Fenton, Robert III, Laura Layton, and Charlotte Fillet, Betty Finan, Alwyn Fine. We give you thanks for each of them and ask your blessings on their lives. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially today, Michael and Catherine, Daniel, Dawn, Catherine, Jane, Heather, Alex. You're invited to add the names of anyone you may be holding in your heart today. that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed the eternal rest, especially today, Bev and Dawn Vandenberg and Jim Wood, in whose memory altar flowers have been given. You're invited to add the names of anyone whose loss you may be grieving today.
We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Amen. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission, that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever, amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Our announcements today uh, include a lot about coming up for Lent, as well as a couple of things about the youth. Um, we have Shrove Tuesday coming up. No, we're not going to come by and throw pancakes at your house, but you are invited to make your favorite pancakes and whatever else you do with pancakes and join us for a live Zoom at six o'clock on Shrove Tuesday, which is the day before Ash Wednesday. We will have music, fellowship, and fun, but please don't talk with your mouth full. Ash Wednesday is gonna look a little bit different. The first Lenten meditation, which is in place of morning prayer for all of Lent, will be available all day. The Ash Wednesday service with music will also be available all day. A live Ash Wednesday service via Zoom will be at 4.30 p.m. And our first session of, new Lenten of the New Lenten series, series, Revive Lent, is from six to seven. There's a wonderful statement in the service sheet about mission with Jamaica that gives us some wonderful information about how we can help the children in Jamaica to attend school and be healthy and not be hungry. During February, we will be sharing different stories from the experience of St. Paul's who have visited Jamaica. So please watch for those stories and enjoy learning about that mission. The youth had a wonderful time on, on Sunday doing a wonderful outdoor sledding and snowball fight. It was great. We had so much fun and I hope to have more youth at the next activity that we do with St. Paul's Youth Going Rogue in 2021. We also have a weekly photo co contest going on for youth. So I invite you to check out the website and take a look at the flyer about the photo contest. And I hope we have some wonderful submissions. And this, first, or this second week, we don't know yet what the theme is going to be, but I will make sure that it gets out to everyone. And I believe that is all for our announcements. 
and let your light so shine before all people that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator of the universe. You bring forth bread from the earth. You have fed us with the bread of life in the body of your son. Feed us now with your presence among us and your presence in your word. As grain scattered upon the earth is gathered into one loaf, so gather your church in every place into the kingdom of your Son. To you be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, creator of the universe. You create the fruit of the vine and you refresh us with the cup of salvation in the blood of Jesus Christ, crucified yet risen. May the time come quickly when we can share that cup again, even as you are with us now in our very thirst for you. Glory to you forever and ever. I invite you now to eat the bread or cracker or whatever you've prepared and to drink your beverage as we consume together this sacred meal, this agape meal, this love feast. Let us pray. Generous God, we have shared together this sacred meal. Kindle us with the fire of your spirit, that when Christ comes again, we may shine like lights before his face, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always.
go into the world now rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.